Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today I am in Villanova, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia. We are in Stonely. This is a, a giant, uh, fantastic house here, uh, and is also home to the Oregon Historical Society. And they also have this fantastic instrument, and here to tell me about it is Chris Kehoe. Uh, Chris, what exactly are we uh, sitting in front of here in the, the living room of the home? So this instrument uh, is an Aeolian Skinner uh, residence organ. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a player organ. Okay. Um, and uh, it's uh, very akin to other uh, residence organs of the era that uh, the Aeolian Company and Welty and others built uh, for, uh, as, as Roland Smith's book references, The Rich and Famous. Mm -hmm. um, in essence, this was kind of uh, television for those that could afford it right. before <laughs> television existed. Well, it wasn't originally in this, this home. No, that's correct. So. Uh, it was originally in another large estate in uh, East Orange, New Jersey. Ooh. Um, and uh, as was the case for so many residence organs by about the late 90s, uh, the instrument was no longer used. Um, and fortunately, uh, it was rescued uh, by Kurt Mangel, who was the previous curator of the Wanamaker organ. Um, it ended up in storage for probably almost 20 years and went through several other hands after Kurt owned it. Uh, it was restored and then um, was installed here when the Stonely Mansion became the headquarters for the Oregon Historical Society. All right, because the OHS wanted to be able to do educational and concert yes. events here. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh, of course, we don't see any pipes or any other trace of the organ. Uh, we just have tone shoots in the floor and in the stairs. Right. So where actually is the organ? So this entire room that we're on uh, or, or in, uh, underneath, uh, in the basement, are the pipe chambers. Okay. Um, originally, the basement was a dirt basement and probably only about 10 feet high from the floor to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, the entirety of that had to be excavated and then wow. a concrete, um, uh, it ended up looking like a swimming pool. Concrete was poured mm -hmm. in uh, and then the chambers were constructed and there are two uh, openings in the floor uh, for tonal egress. Okay, so it all just sort of magically comes in here yes. in this room. <laughs> yeah. Well, wonderful. Well, um, I know it has a player, but sitting over there politely and quietly is Luke Stasionis, <laughs> who helped us with the Wurlitzer not too long ago, uh, and he's going to do a little demonstration of this instrument for us uh, before we go take around okay. and look at it. So, Luke, turn it over to you.
Well, Luke, we're uh, here at the console. Um, first of all, our listeners can probably detect a little bit of a running noise in the background. Yes. What exactly are we hearing? Well, you're hearing the vacuum pump, which runs this console. Because it's an Aeolian console, and having a player mechanism, it all runs on vacuum, sort of like a player piano. OK, so none of that's been electrified or anything. It's no. all still pneumatic. Yeah, it's all still original. OK. So uh, well, tell me about the divisions and how they're laid out on the keyboards here. Sure. So they're laid out kind of in the typical Aeolian way, where the grate and choir are duplex to one another. The swell is on its own manual. There's an echo which floats between the choir and the swell, oh. and a floating solo which plays on the choir or the grate. Okay. Well, let's just uh, let's start with the grate here. Now, um, the organ says Aeolian Skinner, but we know Correct. there's a little bit of this is an Aeolian console, which yes. is identifiable by the tabs. But we might be hearing Skinner pipe work, or we probably are. Yes. Is that correct? This organ was built around the time of the merger, so there's a you know, okay. mixing of what they had. So it's not the typical Aeolian sound, but it's fairly similar. Okay. So the great, we start with our first open diapason, which is typically large. And then our second, which is a bit smaller and a little bit keener. Then in Aeolian nomenclature, they don't tell you what the flutes are, they just give you loud and soft, of course, okay. for the non-organist organ owner, it makes life a bit simpler. So we have our flute loud. That's not very loud. It's not. It sounds like a harmonic flute, though. It might be. Okay. Of course, being the Aeolian, you know, if the Wurlitzer is the theater pit orchestra, these organs are sort of the palm court, very genteel, <laughs> pleasant background music orchestras. And our soft flute. Yeah, also sounds like a little harmonic flute, but yes. a little bit softer. Okay. Then our loud string. Which is sort of gamba-ish in tone. Then our soft string. Both of them together gives you a very nice little... Of course, being like, an organ of that type, the string adds clarity to the ensemble. So if you have a you know, diapason and string, you get a nice. Okay. Then continuing up, we have our four-foot octave. That's really similar to the first diapason. Yeah. Darkness and. It's right without being. Yeah, but it's, it's still pretty. Yeah. yeah. And then our four foot flute, which again is another very. And the highest pitch on this organ is the two foot piccolo. So, getting a nice little flute chorus, you have a very pleasant little. That's with the box open. Wow. Okay. And then getting up to our two reeds. Of course, we have a nice clarinet, as most of these organs do. That's lovely. Yeah. And our lovely little trumpet. All right, but again, it's very yeah, gentle. It's, it's not, not really pushing too hard. It okay. won't interrupt your dinner guests. <laughs> of course. And you can sort of put everything together and have a nice, gentle kind of. Yeah, yeah. just a nice little warm ensemble. OK, mm -hmm. um, well, let's go on up to the swell. Sure. And let's go through that division. The swell, we start with another eight-foot diapason. A bit similar. gentler, yeah. yeah. Very similar quality, just softer. Yes. And they all have a very different color, but again, it's sort of 50 shades of sort of <laughs> muted, muted diapason tone. Coming from the basement, yeah. Yes, and our Spanish flute, which is really just a gadect with a <laughs> fancy name. Our forte string. Which is keen, but again, it's also very you yeah. know, gentle with the Celeste or an Aeolian A vibrato. Our softer string, which is sort of very soft, with the Celeste, of course. And if you close the box, it almost goes away entirely. Yeah, definitely. Yes, and the flute is unified up through two foot to give you, you know, some brightness. Okay. 
And there's a mixture, but of course a mixture in an Aeolian is really meant to be used with the strings. Right. So on its own it's very sort of a dolce cornet, then with the strings. And add the octave coupler. You get a nice sort of gentle yeah, shimmer. Yeah, it just gives you that nice shimmering, and bright sparkling sound. Uh, yes, and more yeah. reads up here, of course, the oboe, a very you know, muted American oboe. Or Carnopian, which again is sort of bright without a lot of power. And you can sort of you know, get a chorus out of it, but it's not really, you know, it's not a Bach organ, it's there to be sure. gentle and pretty and orchestral. And of course, the ubiquitous Bach Schumana. No organ is complete without one. Yes. Okay. Um, well, let's go to the choir then. Yes, the choir is entirely duplexed from the grade. So okay, the diapason so here is the second open. They're just the same stops. Yes. Available. Okay, so we, is everything identical, the clarinet and trumpet and Pretty much, the same yeah. exact number of stops? Okay. Um, well, then that takes us to the solo division. Indeed. And this is on higher pressure. I believe it's close to 10 inches. Oh, wow. So you have a flute, which is actually somewhat present, being on higher pressure. Big pair of strings as compared with the others. And then our French horn, the very deluxe, you know, costs a lot of money, extra stop. Quite a powerful French horn. There. It is, <laughs> and it's sort of nice if you're you know, wanting to beef up the uh, diapason with it. Mm -hmm. and the second first open. All right, gives you more push there. Okay. Yes. And last but not least is our tuba. Very good. Sort of, and this is you know, a lot of the orchestral roles would use it where you'd have the trombones where you do need a big accent for. It's a bright tuba. Yes. So relative to the rest of the organ, it's quite powerful. But well, we have one other division yes. in the manuals, and it's echo, and it actually speaks out over there, around yes. the hallway and out of the stairs. <laughs> so it's completely isolated it's from. It's way yonder. I believe that used to be a pantry at some point in time. <laughs> so it's hopefully you'll hear it. It starts with a uh, very lovely string, a very gentle flute. I believe it's another gedect, a diapason, which is sort of similar to the swell. And of course, another Bach Schumann. Mm -hmm. You close the shades and it goes all the way away. Even with all four rings on. Yes. <laughs> well, that makes sense if you're in here entertaining and you just want some yeah. quiet music coming from out there that doesn't uh, interrupt your conversation. That's a good Indeed. way to do that. And of course, you know, for orchestral effects, so when you have you know, the offstage choir or something, right. you can put that on. Or also just to have sound out in the lobby while you're greeting your dinner guests. That's true. Well, and then we have a pedal division. We do have some yes. independent pedal stops here. There's a uh, Borden, which is independent. A Borden from the Swell. A very lovely violon. It almost sounds like an orchestral it's cello going really, on. Yeah, really edgy. And a big diapason, which is an extension of the first open on the grade. Which is also slightly stringy, so you have a nice incisive of tone to get out of the basement. And interestingly enough, there's no 16-foot reed anywhere on the organ, hmm. but we do have a 32-foot resultant. We have some percussion in here too. We right? do. There's a harp and a chime that play on every manual. And being an Aeolian, there are dampers if you wish. You can also make it soft. Very nice. And of course, chimes. Lovely.
so we're in the, I guess, the, the foyer uh, at Stonely, and um, this is actually part of the pipe organ, believe it or not. Um, one of the unique things about residence organs, and the Aeolian Company was particularly good at cramming organ into places where it really shouldn't have been. Um, we were fortunate in this installation that there was a closet underneath the staircase, and so if you come around this side, Really, you don't see anything because it's disguised, but there's grill cloth here underneath the stairs, and behind that uh, is a small set of swell shades and then the four ranks of the echo organ. And if you follow me into the kitchen, we can see that. So this is the, the echo division. Uh, originally, this was added to the organ uh, in the mid-1930s, and believe it or not, uh, was about 30 feet away from the living room where the console was located, where you would actually be able to hear it. And it spoke through a tone chute, which was probably only about 30 inches square. So it probably was not easy to hear. Um, but this was something that Archer Gibson uh, recommended that the owner of, of the organ add to it. Um, and you have a diapason, um, string, probably a solitional, a stop flute, and then Vox Humana in this division. So this is the basement, um, and of course, utilitarian as they usually are. Um, and the blower and all of the chambers are installed down here. So let's head that direction. And so this is the back uh, of, the, of the pipe chambers. Um, as you can see, this is the uh, cement that I was talking about that was poured. Uh, if you can imagine this entire room, uh, this extends, I would say, probably about 20 or 30 feet in that direction uh, until you hit the, the foundation of the end of the house. Uh, so back here, this is a good example to show the um, amalgamation of Skinner and Aeolian products. If you look over here, you have two different reservoirs. Um, the solo static reservoir to the right is sort of the Aeolian yellow, and then the Skinner uh, static reservoir here on the left. And then again here on the floor, uh, a Skinner tremolo and an Aeolian shade engine. This is the uh, collection of rolls that came with this instrument. Uh, the previous owners uh, collected uh, several and would often buy up uh, different collections. And most of these are recuts, uh, which is typically all that we play now, uh, because the old rolls, the, um, the paper uh, was generally very acidic and over time deteriorates. Um, so oftentimes playing them on the restored players will shred them, so try not to do that. So then if you follow me around this way, uh, this chamber was actually designed to be seen. And if we walk down this corridor, you'll notice the uh, glass panels and you can actually see into the chambers. This is the great, great and choir division. the service entrance. So in this division, uh, Great and Choir are combined in the same box. Both of these main chests are, are duplex Skinner chests. Um, that way each division can share those stops. Um, in this division we have the first and second open diapasons. 
uh, several of the strings from softest to loudest, um, two flutes and some of the upper work, the upper flutes, and then uh, trumpet and clarinet. Uh, in the back of the chamber are the bases of the 16-foot open diapason, and then uh, in front of that, the other bases. Um, so on the front swell chest are the uh, solitional and celeste. In between uh, is the open diapason. Um, there's a trumpet and then a full-length oboe. Uh, on the back chest, the stopped flute, uh, the flute celeste, and, um, and then the string mixture and vox humana. So this is the 16-foot uh, violone, the uh, uh, second independent voice in the pedal on this instrument. Um, and as you can see, it wraps around this corner, and then the, uh, the top of it is here on this chest. Um, the Skinner chime action uh, and chimes, and then uh, right beneath the fireplace uh, in the living room, this what is the foundation of the fireplace in front of that is the pedal borden. So this is the, the original elevator shaft uh, for, for the home, and uh, to the right here um, are the original steam pipes for operating the lift.
Chris, this instrument, of course, has a player, mm -hmm. as it was, as Aeolian was was fond of making for home organs. So, uh, show me how we make this console play. So, um, you have the the music rack here, which sort of disappears into the lid. And then, oh, okay, player school box, just like you'd have for a player piano. Yeah. yeah. And then what role do we have here? So this is so this is the fugue in C major uh, by Bach, as recorded by uh, Marcel Dupre. Oh wow! One of the unique things about these uh, residence organs and the player systems mm -hmm. is that the the roles sort of represent um, you know recorded history of of organists from the era. Sure. Uh, they're some of the only recordings that we have. So yeah. All right. Well, show me how we load it up. And the nice thing about this duo art system, uh, there were different iterations of it, and they would keep engineering uh, and making changes to it. Mm -hmm. um, by the time uh, this was was built in the in 1931, um, all you had to do was load the roll in, set the tempo, and it would take care of everything else. Wow! So, so does it tell you what tempo to, to adjust? Yes. It? Okay. Sixty, I see. Yeah. <laughs> So it does the stop controls, all the expression, everything, all the everything, everything you need. You just sit back and listen. I want to ask you a question about the, the, the player mechanism. I understand we have a bar here with lots of little holes, and there's vacuum yes. behind it that is keeping the paper up close. And then when one of the holes in the paper comes through, the vacuum sucks through, and that triggers something. Yes. Now, a, I've, most people understand a player piano with lots of little holes for the notes. We have those lots of, a lot more notes than a piano, so we have right. manuals. But we also have stop control, so tell me how the stops and expression work uh, is so in the system. When, um at the beginning of the roll, there's a control on the right, which, and you'll see a light come on. Oh. And um, that was wired in in order to uh, to indicate that the, the roll was prepared to turn on stops. Okay. Uh, what you mentioned about the valves and the similarity between a player piano uh, is virtually identical. Uh, behind the roll mechanism um, are three tiers of, of leather pouches, very similar to the pouches you find in the chest of the pipe organ. Um, and of course then they're under vacuum. And on top of the pouch is a small electrical contact. Mm. And so when, uh, when a hole in the roll comes over the bar and opens that, um, that pouch is activated and then the electrical contact uh, makes contact okay. and that sends the signal to either a stop or a note. So these holes are play. like the armature in electro-pneumatic action yes, where kind it of. moves, it lets the air out yes. and something happens. Yeah. Okay, so then we have not just key controls but also stop controls. Right. Um, now does it turn them on or off or keep them on? How does it? So um, the original uh, what was called a jack box which had small jacks that would turn on and off the electrical relay uh, would control stops and um, six stages of the uh, shade engines okay. to control expression. Okay, so you can just send one signal and it would... Yeah, so the way the roll would work is that jack um, was, what it would do is um, the pneumatic would, would strike it up 
to turn on. And then it had sort of an ingenious system uh, where with a lever, it would the same hole would also turn it off by hitting it again and it would move. Okay, so a reversible. And, yes, uh, reversible. Essentially. All yes. right. So these first little holes that are coming up, those are turning on stops? They're turning on stops and, and uh, setting the shade engines to where they need to be. Okay, so, so. if we continue rolling forward, mm -hmm then it does all of that and yep. nothing changes on the console but now we're ready for notes yes, to start correct. playing. Yeah. Now are these two manuals that are playing here because the notes seem to be doing So the, the Aeolian thing. tracker bar uh, is is divided into the upper and lower mm -hmm. um, and the idea was really for uh, upper and lower as, as two manuals okay. in essence. Um, there is not a separate control for pedal. Uh, the base end of the tracker bar uh, would would play pedal notes and so sometimes there's a duplication between the voice uh, on the grate or swell manual and then the pedal voices but it can play the pedal voice so that you have the pitch. Mm -hmm. There were various mechanisms to extend um, the pedal to be able to play an octave higher and mm -hmm. things like that. Okay. So as we look at the holes, they don't line up exactly, do they? They're offset so the lower is they in between the just slightly, So yes. these notes, even though they look like they're synced up they're offset just yes. enough so that the top hits yes. the okay I get, hits the first row before the second one hits the yes. second row. All right. And then while the organ's playing, while the player's playing, you can can you if you change stops here at the console or play along, will no, it do anything? No, not not with this particular instrument. Okay. Um, Aeolian went through, like I said, the different iterations of their design. Um, the earliest ones had no automatic control, and so mm -hmm. actually we're player organs, but we're not considered the dual art system. Um, dual art referring to uh, the two arts where you could play by hand or automatically okay. with a roll. Um, when the duo art came out in, I, I think it was around 19, 1913 or 14, uh, that was when everything was completely automatic. Mm. Um, this actually turned out to be a, a little bit of a problem for Aeolian because they had many patrons who had player organs and they would pay for the upgrade to have the player uh, become a duo art system, but then all of a sudden they realized they could no longer control the stops. And there were actually a lot of people who, though they couldn't play the organ, actually enjoyed sitting down and being able to change they had, registration. They had to do the registration themselves. <laughs> and so um, Aeolian, uh, the, the way the duo art rolls for most of the 20s, um, those, those systems, you could shut off that feature. So we could go through and play, uh, you know, Dupre's recording of Bach on all the strings if we wanted to. Oh, okay. um, by the time this system was developed, I think that they felt that that was something that most people probably didn't care about so much, and so this actually is not able to do that. Well, Luke and Chris, thank you so much for demonstrating and showing us around this wonderful Aeolian Skinner organ here at Stone Lee, where the Organ Historical Society is based now. Um, if you're interested in coming to hear this instrument, I think the OHS is happy to have people come in and hear it. They'll put on a roll for you. Uh, you'll need to contact the office to make an appointment. Uh, so there is a link to the OHS website down below, and you can talk to them about trying to, to work out coming to see this instrument. And both of these guys uh, will put links to their websites if you want to send them a message and say hi or contact them about uh, playing or working on organs or anything like that. Uh, that information is all down in the description. Down in the description you can also find a link to the support page for the Oregon Media Foundation where you can become a sponsor of the foundation and help us come to great places like this and make videos with great people like these. Uh, people like Mark Lynch who became a video sponsor this year and helped make this video possible. Uh, you can be that person too so uh, click that link to find out more about sponsoring the Oregon Media Foundation. We'll have more videos coming from Philadelphia still. Can you believe it? We're not done yet. Until then you can always find classical organ music on our three streaming stations, OrganLive.com, Positively Baroque and the Organ Experience. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed and click the bell for notifications. Thank you again, gentlemen. This has been a fantastic trip here. Uh, and until next time, I'm Brent Johnson. I'll talk to you soon.